In this video, we're gonna go through a complete step-by-step -step guide on how to get your real estate license and start your real estate career in South Carolina. We're also gonna cover a couple of important questions when interviewing for your first brokerage to give yourself the highest chance of success. And at the end of the video, we're gonna cover all the costs associated with getting started so you know exactly how much to budget. Let's dive right into it. My name is Chris with the Empire Real Estate YouTube channel. On this channel, we talk about real estate, personal finance, and entrepreneurship. Before we get started, I wanna offer you our free how to get licensed and start your real estate career guide. Everything inside this video, plus a little bit more is inside that guide. So to get your copy, click the link in the description below. First things first, before we get started, I wanna go over some of the basic requirements in order to start this process so you don't waste a lot of time. The first one is you must be 18 years old or older, you must have a high school diploma or a GED, and you must be able to pass a background check that shows you have nothing on your record that would prevent you from getting licensed. The very first step to getting licensed is completing the state's required pre-licensed education requirements. In South Carolina, you're required to complete 90 hours of state-approved pre-licensed education classes. And yes, I know, 90 hours is a ton of time especially if you have a busy nine to five job or just a busy schedule in general. Because of this, we recommend you check out Calibri Real Estate School. They offer these classes online, which makes it a lot more convenient and flexible for your schedule, and they do an awesome job. So if you wanna check them out, there's an affiliate link down below with different sales and discounts. Once you complete your pre-licensed education classes, it's time to study. Because if you schedule your exam right away and rush into it, you might not pass the exam. If you didn't know, this exam has quite a high failure rate, and to avoid that, I would suggest you do a couple things. The first thing is to time block an hour a day for at least two weeks to read through the material that you learned in your pre-licensed education classes and try to retain as much as possible. Time blocking an hour a day is totally doable and it will definitely help you retain a lot more of the information you're gonna need to pass the exam. The second thing I would do is I would get a real estate study buddy. This is somebody that can go through this process with you, that can quiz you with flashcards and doing this will make it a lot more fun, a lot more interactive and when you're having fun, typically you retain a lot more of the information and the odds of you passing will increase. So. Doing these two things alone can be a major help, but if you can't find a real estate study buddy and the textbooks are just way too boring, then I would suggest you check out PrepAgent. PrepAgent is a test-like simulation tool that takes you through the process. It's very realistic and similar to the exam. The only difference is when you answer the questions, it will give you feedback on if you're getting the answers right or wrong, and it will go into a in-depth explanation as to why you're getting them right or why you're getting them wrong. I use this product to pass my real estate exam and I really loved it. So if you wanna check them out, there's an affiliate link down below where you can check out different deals and sales on PrepAgent. Once you feel confident, it's time to schedule your real estate exam with PSI Exams. PSI Exams is a third-party testing company that administers the exam and you're gonna to wanna to give them at least 24 hours notice to schedule and make sure that they have time to get you in on their calendar. Now, on test day, you're gonna to wanna to bring a couple basic things. The first thing is a basic non-scientific calculator for the math portion of the exam, and you're gonna to wanna to bring two forms of identification to get into the testing center on test day. Once you walk into the testing center, you're going to notice that it's a multiple choice exam, and this is a good thing. But be careful because if you rush through the exam and you don't read the questions multiple times, you might fail because the questions can be a little tricky and they don't do this to trick you. They do it to make sure that you really know the, the information and that you are knowledgeable enough to be licensed. So make sure you reread the questions a couple of times before you submit your answer and you're still gonna probably finish early. So don't worry about running out of time. Either way, you're probably gonna finish early, so take your time and give yourself the best odds of passing. Once you've completed the exam, you're gonna find out right away if you passed or failed. And this is the best part. You don't have to wait forever to get your results. And if you did fail, it's okay. A lot of people have failed this exam, and some of the best agents in the entire country have failed the exam. So it's not an indicator that you're gonna be bad at real estate. It just means you have to go back 
and study a little bit more. Now, if you did pass the exam, it's time to celebrate. This is a huge milestone. You're one step closer to getting licensed and you wanna give yourself a huge pat on the back. Next, it's time to get your background check done. So in South Carolina, you're required to get a background check and your fingerprinting done to assure you have nothing on your record that would prevent you from getting licensed. Once that's complete, it's time to submit your application to get licensed. So you're gonna basically package up your past real estate exam, your completed real estate pre-licensed education classes, and your past background check, send it off and wait to hear back. This process can take a couple weeks. In the meantime, it's time to do the next step. The next step is finding a sponsoring broker. Now, this is one of the more fun parts of the process because the truth is most brokers will take you on as a new agent. There's not much risk in it for them. They're gonna have to put some time and energy into training you, but you're gonna be 100% commissioned in most cases. So they don't really mind in most cases, and you're gonna to get to basically interview around and pick the one that is the best fit for you. So there are a couple of important questions to ask when interviewing for your first brokerage, because if you didn't know, this industry has a high failure rate. In fact, 87% of agents that start this business actually fail out of the business. So you don't wanna be one of those agents, and I wanna give you a couple of questions to ask when interviewing for your first brokerage. The very first question to ask is, do you offer a mentor that's gonna be there to help me? Now, ideally having a mentor for the first three to five deals can be a huge advantage as a new agent. I remember my first three to five deals were all over the place. And if I didn't have a mentor, I'm not sure if I would be here today still selling real estate because it's very stressful. And there's all kinds of situations that can arise. And if you don't have somebody in your corner helping you handle that, you might be overwhelmed and you might just back off the gas on the business altogether and go back to your nine to five job. The next question to ask is if they have a training system in place for new agents. Now, don't confuse this with a mentor because a mentor and a training system are two entirely different things. Now, when paired together, they can be really powerful and it will definitely increase the odds of you having success in this industry. But a training system is basically something you can do on a daily basis, such as video modules, live training classes, trainings at your brokerage, things like that, that will help you start your business from square one and get all the way to where you built a profitable business. Having something like that is very important because a mentor is great. And having somebody to call when challenging things are coming up is very important. But having some kind of a guide to guide you from, you know, the very start all the way to the finish and something you can do on your own that's interactive and will go over over all the little things that you need to be doing is very important. I remember when I first started, I walked into my brokerage on day one and I was just like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. And everybody was doing their own thing. Everybody was busy and I was brand new and I just didn't know what to do. And this is something that a lot of agents face. And as the weeks go on, they start to just do nothing. And this can eventually lead to you quitting the business or failing out of the industry because if you're not doing anything and you're not doing the right things, you're not going to have money coming in. And at the end of the day, if you don't have a lot of money coming in, you're probably going to quit the business and go back to your job that you had before real estate. The third question to ask is how are you going to generate business or how are you going to market your business? Every brokerage has a different way of teaching their agents to get business. Some brokerages will help you with your marketing. Other brokerages and teams will give you leads and some brokerages will tell you just market to your friends and family. And this is called SOI marketing. So depending on what you want to build and what kind of network you already have in place, will really depend on which kind of brokerage you decide to go with. There's no right or wrong answer to this. They all work if you do them the right way, but you need to decide which one is the perfect fit for you. Back when I started, I was only 22. So doing SOI marketing only was never going to work. So I had to learn how to prospect, market, get leads, do all that kind of stuff. And it worked out well, but there was a steep learning curve. So Asking these questions up front can really make sure that you're aligning yourself with the right brokerage or the right team to make sure that you're in the right position to give yourself the highest odds of success. By the way, we are looking for agents to partner with in South Carolina for Team Power Unit. So if you're interested in partnering with me, there's a link down below for a 30 minute 
partner call. And if it's a good fit, that's awesome. If not, maybe I can point you in the right direction and give you some tips. Once you find the perfect sponsoring broker and you get your license application back and it's approved, then it's time to hang your license with your sponsoring broker and it's time to get started building your business. So it's a really exciting time. But before we go, I do want to get into the costs associated with getting licensed so you know exactly how much to budget. The very first thing to budget for is the 90 hours of state approved pre-licensed education. Depending on what school you pick, the price will vary, but I would budget between four and $800 to get this done. The next thing I would budget for is your background check and fingerprinting. I would budget about $100 to get this done. Next, you have your exam fee, which is $63 with PSI exams. And then you have your application fee to get licensed, which is $25 with the state of South Carolina. Last but not least, I would budget between two and $500 to get started with your first brokerage and get you know insurance. So getting licensed is not that expensive. The hardest part is completing the state required pre-license education requirements and passing the real estate exam. Once you get through that, it's pretty easy to get started. That's the good news. So if you're going to get licensed this year, drop that in the comment section below. I definitely want to hear from you. And if you have questions about getting licensed, drop that in the comment section below as well. And I'll do my best to get back to you and help you out. Thanks for tuning in and you have a great day.